All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder. How many of you have observed the diffraction pattern which we normally observe it in our daily life? I hope, I hope you all know about the, this phenomenon which we are reading it from the earlier classes as well and we daily observe it in our daily life. So now we'll try to understand this physical phenomenon in detail about in this lecture. Myself is Professor Nitin Puri who will be delivering this lecture before you. Welcome to S Chance Academy. So what we are going to cover in this one in the previous lectures we had covered that what type of diffraction pattern normally we observe from a single slit and what type of diffraction pattern which we did discussed it with the front of a diffraction from a single slit along with the circular aperture. In the continuation of that, what will happen if we increase the number of slits? We did it for a single slit. We observed what type of minima and maximum maxima will be observed onto the screen. But if we are increasing the slits, will the diffraction pattern remain same or different type of central maxima and the order of first or second maxima and minima will be different. This will be discussing in this coming lecture. So if you want to go more in detail about these topics, you can go to the S Chance Publishing with the ebook link which is available onto the screen in the description box. So if we started with the front of a diffraction at a single slit, what we say when we had discussed the front of a diffraction from a single slit, we took a single slit, right? When we are saying the front of a diffraction at a double slit, it means we'll be using two slits. As you can see onto the screen, we will be making these two slits, right? If you see this one, I'm making the two slits, right? These are the two slits, right? And these two slits are having equal width. Suppose it is small a. And this is also small a, right? This is this is exactly we are talking of this from here to this, right? This is we are talking of right now. There is from this. They are equal width are having it, right? And we are saying this is the part small b, which is the opaque one. So it means we are talking of the two slits. One slit is this one. Second slit is this one, right? As we can see onto the screen also, right? And the opaque part, the width of that opaque part is considered to be as small b, correct? So we are saying it and again, it means we are talking of now again, two rectangular slits parallel to one another and perpendicular to the plane of the paper, right? The width of each slit is small a and which we normally saying it as, uh, representing it as a, b, c and d. So a, b and c, d are the two slits, right? And this center point we are considering it as o, right? And then now we are saying it, suppose this is a screen we are talking of right now, where we'll be observing the pattern which will be observed from the two slits, right? So, right, we, we, what we are saying, there is an, we'll be considering a lens again as we did it. This is the normal procedure for every, uh, every, uh, uh, in optics on this diffraction pattern which we are discussing. This is a light incident onto it as we know this, right? And then suppose this we are representing it as 
x uh, x and suppose this are saying y right so light is emanating of, of all complete x y right so if you see this what exactly suppose this is a perpendicular right and then if you see this one light is incident and they are coming here from point C it is coming here and then we will be reaching on to this point P and then this is point like this so what exactly I am just making the waves which we are coming here and just trying to understand it what exactly it is so we got it at this is point P dash this is point B this is a wave Right, this is uh, a lens which is an every, this is suppose M N, this is M, this is N, this is we are saying it as screen, right, this is L is lens we are saying, this is L, right, so now just try to understand it what we had made it, what we have done it, we had considered the slit, two slits A, B and C, D which are having an equal width small a. There's an opaque surface which is BC, that part we had mentioned at the thickness as small p. Light is incident onto this complete XY where we had considered the two slits, right? And when light is incident onto it, it is reaching to the lens L and then again by converging it, we are getting the pattern onto the screen which is MN and there's a point OP is perpendicular. What exactly we are considering that as I said it when light is incident onto these two slits, every point will work as a secondary wavelet, emanating a secondary wavelet, secondary source will be there and those waves will be having interference with each other, right? So those are parallel to OP, we will be observing suppose the central maxima is observing at point P but those which are not parallel to OP they are having some angle making an angle theta as you can see this one if we say this is theta right this angle is theta this is again angle is theta right so if these two angles are theta we could be able to see the screen where we are observing the central maxima is at point P dash so what exactly uh, we are going to understand once we take a break right now I'm going to ask what type of central maxima and what type of intensity distribution you are observing when we are considering the two slits will it be the same way as we normally get it with the single slit or it will be a different one we'll be discussing after the break hi I'm dr. Sujata Sen Gupta I'm going to be teaching you all about organic chemistry, all those different topics, stereochemistry, alkynes, which you found very difficult, that I will be discussing with you. So please hit uh, like, share and subscribe and always come back to S. Chand Academy for more videos in the future. So before going to the break, we talked about it that the pattern which we are observing from the two slits will be the same we normally observed it for the single slit as well. Because what we had considered, we had considered the two slits. Light is incident onto it. We had a lens, collecting lens, and then we had a screen. We talked it when light is incident onto it, every point will work as a secondary source 
and light will be emanating from those point sources. We, we draw a perpendicular OB, OP and we had considered that light which is parallel to OP, which is perpendicular, at that particular point of time, we will be considering the maxima at point P onto the screen, MN. But those which are not parallel to OP, they are making an angle theta as we can see onto the screen and after that light is getting conversed and we will be getting the maxima at point P dash. This is P dash. So the two points which we had observed in terms of in that way, that one thing what, what, what we got it finally is that the diffraction pattern has to be considered and taken in a two way. Right? So if, 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 we are, if we are drawing a perpendicular in this way, this angle is also, this angle is also theta. If we, this, these points are there, this angle is also there. We have done a perpendicular onto it. Suppose this is saying this is E, right? So if I have to just understand in that way that what type of diffraction pattern will we normally observe it from two slits, we have to consider the two parts. Number one, first one is, that the interference phenomenon due to the secondary waves emanating from corresponding points of two slits. Number one, right? And what exactly the number two will be? Number two, you can see onto the screen as we are talking of right now, what I said it with the uh, first part is that the interference phenomenon due to the secondary waves emanating from corresponding points of the two slits right and what will be the two part you can guess it by your own that with this part we could be able to see what type of pattern we will normally observe it with a single slit uh, double slit second is the diffraction pattern due to the secondary waves from the two slits individually this is the second part right so it means for calculating the position of for calculating the position of maxima and minima, the diffraction angle normally, this is theta we are talked about it, this is the theta we are talking about it. So we are saying it, this theta is considered to be the angle of diffraction, right? And the another angle we had considered it as phi also, we are not uh, uh, putting it right now, but just try to understand it that if diffraction angle is this theta, we are trying to understand it that the theta is the angle between the secondary waves and the initial direction of the incident light. You see, if it is coming here in this way, reaching to point P, if it is parallel, it will be reaching to point P, otherwise it is reaching to point P dash when we had considered the angle theta, which is angle of diffraction, right? Now, what we will try to understand it, that what is happening in terms of interference, this is, what we are talking at right now and then right and then from all these points a b and then c and point d right so this is we are talking of this 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 and this right this again we'll try to understand it a this is b this is c this is d right and then um, if I'm understanding it, you will be able to know where exactly the theta I'm talking of right now. Right? So this is, uh, if I'm drawing a perpendicular to it, like this, right? And this angle, what we are saying is theta. This is what we are talking of, this angle. Right, so the same. This AB is we said it that this is AB, which is small a. This is small b, which we have seen it in the previous slide as well. And this is ACD, which is again a. See, this is the width. So this is AB and CD. This is small a. This is BC, which is an opaque part. This is small b. Correct. So now we are trying to understand the interference maxima and minima which we will be observing. Now let us consider secondary waves 
let us consider a secondary waves traveling in the direction which is inclined at an angle theta which we can see it in the onto the screen right so when i saying the angle theta it is with the initial direction right if it is if it is not there then the angle will not be there right but we are considering it that there is an angle theta so so if you are considering it this suppose this we are saying it as n right so if we take this triangle c a n if we take the triangle c a and n right so what exactly the sin theta will be so sin theta will be equal to sin theta will be equal to sin theta will be equal to c c n upon a c right so what is c n c n if we say this is c n and a c will be equal to if we take this triangle a c n c a n what it will be it will be equal to a plus b total is a plus b because this b c is b and ab is a which is a slit width and bc is the width of the opaque uh, surface so this ac will be equal to a plus b right so what the cn will be so cn will be equal to a plus b sin theta a plus b sin theta right so if what exactly the cn what cn is this what is cn this cn is the part difference we are calculating the cn is the part difference because what we have done it we had drawn a perpendicular a and on to this right when we had drawn a perpendicular on it it means this is the difference between the two which is going parallel and which is going make an angle theta that's why we need to calculate that particular part difference cn so we took an triangle acn and we got it that cn is equal to a plus b sin theta so a is the width of the slit b is the opaque which is opaque uh, opaque surface which is bc right so cn is equal to a plus b sin theta so if the path difference is n equal to the odd multiple of lambda by 2 it means if a plus b sin theta if cn because uh, if 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 i can write it here because here a plus b sin theta is equal to and if we are considering obviously when it is an odd multiples of lambda by 2 if it is an odd multiple of lambda by 2 so it will be equal to it will be equal to 2n plus 1 2n plus 1 lambda lambda on 2 see so a plus b sin theta n is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2 the direction of minima due to the interference of the secondary waves from the two slits will be a plus b sin theta n is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2 so if we are going to put the value because if we are saying n is equal to 1 2 and 3 and so on if we are going to put these values we will be able to know correspondingly theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and so on which we can see on to the screen if 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 every angle is theta 1 because first n is equal to 1 2 3 and 4 sin theta 1 sin theta 2 sin theta 3 and so on we will be able to know what we are going to get it that sin theta n will be equal to we can calculate it that sin theta n is equal to it will be equal to 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2 upon a plus b sin of theta n is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda upon 2 a plus b right uh, 2 a plus b right so we'll 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 um, stop the discussion here and when we'll move further we'll try to understand it that secondary waves if they are traveling in the another direction not in theta along theta dash then what type of maximum minima will be observed so if you if you had um, if you want to go more in detail about these topics you can go to s chance uh, publishing uh, ebook uh, link which is shared onto the screen in the uh, description box thank you if you have uh, like this lecture please like share and subscribe thank you so much